Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you, Inform Ontario and Marcus, for inviting me to share my message of hope for the future, particularly when it comes to the future of work. And thanks to each of you for taking the time to join this presentation, either now in person or on the replay. Our presentation today is titled Tilting Human. When we're done here, you should understand what the future of work is, how it impacts you, and how it may impact your client base. So many of us are working remotely right now, and I want to acknowledge that. Some of you may be pulled away by a sick relative or a young child needing help. And so in, in a moment of COVID, I've actually flipped my presentation and put my contact information way up front. If at any time you feel you would like more information, please find me on my website, Tilt the Future, or email me at karina at tiltthefuture.com. So my name is Karina D'Souza. Karina rhymes with arena and is spelled that way. I'm a strategist, and as Marcus said, in 2015, I found myself focusing on the future of work, primarily addressing Generation Z. That's anyone born after 1995. My website and my Instagram presence carry the same name as my podcast, which is Tilt the Future, and it's focused on, the, on topics such as the future of work. I'm most active, and where you're going to find me most often, is on LinkedIn, under my name, Karina D'Souza. And I'm trying to up my Instagram game right now, and there my tag is Tilt the Future. And I'm very proud to say I've recently published a book titled Contours of Courageous Parenting, Tilting Towards Better Decisions. It's tough enough to parent, but it calls on a special form of courage to parent kids who are going to lead our world in 2050 and 2070. As I mentioned before, I've been focused on the future of work since 2015. It would not be possible to share everything I have learned in a 45 minute presentation. So I had to make some very tough choices on what not to cover. As we work through the slides, you will realize that any set of the five could be its own full hour presentation or a three hour workshop. All that is to say, if you get really excited about what you hear, please join my newsletter or contact me directly because I have so much more that I can continue to share with you. If everything runs to plan, I will talk fast and we will have 10 minutes for Q&A at the end. There are a number of questions that I've scattered through this presentation, so you could use those as your starting point. And please send Marcus your questions as we go along. If you prefix them with a Q, it'll make his life easier at the end. I recognize that in a two-day symposium, you're gonna be exposed to a number of great concepts and discussions. And I don't expect you to remember everything from this presentation, but I do hope that in the weeks and months from now, your memory will be jogged back to this presentation and parts of what we've discussed. To do that, I've tried to use three different visuals as we talk about the future of work. These are three visuals that are also linked to the main sections of our presentation today. I was very interested to hear Marcus reference water because that is very evident in my first picture. And I've called it the gap. You may think this is an odd title in discussing the future of work, but if you look closely at this picture, we're right there in a raft in this crazy white water deep in the canyon between two high plateaus. On one side, we have the stable industrial era, and on the other is the future of work. But right now, we're in the middle of rough and turbulent waters. So each time you see or hear gushing water, I'm gonna hope that your mind will return to this discussion today and why it feels so turbulent and the specific set of skills we each have access to that will allow us to make our way to steadier times. Then we're gonna discuss connection. Do you see the sequence of dots? That is very often how confusing life looks to a client who's accessing your services. They know they're supposed to do something, to know something, but often they don't know what that is, where it is, how, or particularly why. That is until you enter and you're able to add clarity and color to their lives. This is a game that I play from the New York Times, it's called Vertex. And when you open it, all you see is this huge array of dots. And from that, you're supposed to imagine and create the final image. It's like being given all the pieces to an elaborate jigsaw puzzle without the box cover. But the next time you hold or smell a strawberry, I want you to think on how people rely on you to not only make a connection to one piece of information, but also to understand its context in the bigger picture. And in keeping with this strawberry theme, our last section will be uh, is signified by a mosaic. 
It is the memorial to John Lennon from Strawberry Fields in Central Park. And I like it because if you look at it very closely, it's made out of tiny little bits. But when you put those bits together, you see the bigger inspirational picture. Each of your organizations is that different independent way that the public gets to access key information. But when we work together, we pool our technologies, concepts, ideas, the whole becomes even bigger than the sum of its parts. And you can significantly expand the way someone not only accesses data, but is able to convert it into action. So each time you get to set, stare at a set of tiles, whether it's in your kitchen backsplash, your shower stall, or whilst waiting for the subway, I hope you'll recall just how instrumental you and your organization is in the bigger picture, particularly as we move into a world where, we're, where we are swimming in a sea of information. So those are our three memory triggers, the sound of gushing water, the smell of strawberries, and looking at tiles. Today, we're gonna to cover the future of work from two different perspectives, the who and the how. The who are the different groups that are involved in the journey. They are the constituents, your organization, the members and the makeup of your workforce, your client base and yourself. And the how is how could your work change? What is different about this time around? What role do you play in getting your client to ask a better question? How can we make this transition by connecting on a human level? Most importantly, it's about how to manage our energy by knowing that this is a marathon and not a sprint. It's a very fluid discussion and I represented it with this Rubik's cube because just when you think you've got a handle on one piece, it upsets the pattern and turns us upside down. So first question of the series, what do you hope to learn in this session? If you have pen and paper handy, just jot something down quickly. Meantime, I'm gonna to talk to you about Tilt the Future, which is my organization. I have four major pillars, technology, foundation skills, transition and transformation, and well-being. And you can think of each of them as four legs of a chair. Each is important. So as Marcus said, I started off in 2015. And at that point, all of future of work to me was one big giant pillar, technology. I was looking at robotics, I was looking at AI algorithms, but I began to see that this particular set of technology acceleration was going to be quite different. And it was going to have a far bigger impact from the technology shift my mother had lived through when she moved from the manual to the electric typewriter and then to the computer keyboard. I started realizing that this latest set of technology would trigger a much bigger displacement, a transformation of the way we work, which is going to ripple into a bigger transition for society. And that is why I'm so excited to have you in my audience today. When I'd come to this realization, I had three young kids, aged 12 to 17 at my dinner table, making their life career choices. They were raised to be good industrial era worker bees, but life was just about to throw them and all the rest of us a huge curveball and change the rules of the game right in the middle of playoff season. So here's me, the traditional immigrant mom, and I'm pushing them away from the safe, solid, secure, middle-class career prospects. But something else was also going on in around 2016. Many of you all may have noticed a significant uptick in the mental health issues for young adults. Much of it was from kids who could see the way the world was moving, but they were bumping heads against their parents, parents like me, who were insisting that they knew better and their kids should become a lawyer or a doctor. As I extrapolated the shift that was coming, I envisioned our society 50 years from now. I didn't want mental health to be the diabetes epidemic of the future. I can't imagine the pressure that would place on our healthcare system. So full disclosure, with Tilt the Future, I have three main missions. I want to talk to parents, the last of our generation who have grown up in the industrial era, but the first to raise our kids in the new information era. It's like we're the first generation of parents who raise kids after the invention of the printing press. Our old ways are insufficient, and now we have to learn first and then teach them how to read and write because they're going to be accessing and processing information very differently from us. The second is I want us to change our vocabulary. I want us to speak to our young children and use open language full of possibility when we set our expectations. I often say the words we hear in our year when we're 15 echo in our heads when we're 50. 
If you say that to a young adult, you will be successful only when you have a full-time job with a pension plan, that's an expectation you're setting. I, as a futurist, do not see that as true in the work structure of the future. So I'd imagine a number of very discontented 50-year-olds in the year 2060, dealing with a lot of unresolved and misunderstood guilt and, and insecurity for something that is honestly totally out of their control. So our words matter. And you and your organizations are very well placed to spread that message, particularly to parents. The other pillar is foundation skills, which many of you all may know as EQ or emotional quotient skills. This area is important because it's going to provide the skills we need in order to make this transition. I want to focus on their skills and I'll bring them into this, this discussion that we call the messy middle. Now, there are a number of other organizations out there that speak to these three pillars, but very few of them are actually talking about the gap, the transition to the new era and how we handle that. And that's what I'm going to make the primary focus of my presentation today. So here we are in the messy, in the messy middle the moment of hanging on for dear life, of uncertainty. My role in this journey is to be your guide. We're talking about a big change ahead, and I'm here to help you understand the scale of this change in your life and the lives around you. We are moving from the old era and into the new era. We all got lulled into thinking this was just more and more technology seeping into our lives. But what we haven't noticed is how dramatically it has changed everything. Some of you may have noticed that I had a roller coaster on my title slide. It's a trademark of my organization. I also have it on my business cards. And I did it with a particular purpose. When we were in the industrial era, we could rely on climbing the career ladder. Well, that ladder is now rusted. And instead, we're on a giant roller coaster. But I have a strategy. If I brought you into the workplace and told you that there is a ladder and then put you on a roller coaster, you're going to be very confused. But if instead I tell you right from the start that this is going to be a roller coaster, I'm now changing your expectations. You can now show up knowing that there will be big dips, but also extraordinary highs, and you come ready to enjoy the ride. For the kids, this is fun because it's the only way they know. But for us leaders and parents, because this is not the way we grew up, it feels discordant. So it's the same with whitewater rafting. It's not easy. But if you come to it with the right mindset, ready to accept the challenges and get a little wet, it'll change your entire ex experience. 